Hello there Pisces, welcome to your March. It looks like a, a water pump in front of the house and there are these two kids, very young kids, like under the age of five. They've been playing in the mud so their hands and their feet are all dirty and then their mom, this woman comes out and she turns on the pump like she, you know, is pumping the water so that they can wash their hands. And she's looking at them and she's just incredibly, you know, happy, like kids will be kids. And then um, in the house, you can kind of see the, the dad, the husband, kind of looking out. She turns around, looks at her husband. She doesn't have that same shine and shimmer and, and kind of love in her eyes when she looks at the husband. But then she turns away, looks at the kids, and her eyes kind of light up. So what I'm feeling is um, I feel like there's some situation in your life that is proving to be lackluster in some capacity, okay? And it could be that you are actively trying to find other avenues or other things that can still bring you excitement in the situation so that you're not bored of it, okay? So I feel like you're, you're trying to find new inspirations. You're trying to find uh, an area in that specific situation where you can focus your attention and to kind of draw your attention away from the, the things that are not working. So you're focusing on the positive and you're actively trying to fix the things that are not really bringing you a lot of emotional happiness or that are not really, you know, um, able to give you the same joy, the same love, and the same type of passion that you're used to. And the balloon is trying to lift her away, but you know, she's uh, the balloon is small and she's she's a grown woman. And so it's finding, it, it's almost like the weight of, of, well, her weight, she's not overweight, she's just a, a, an adult, and the balloon is just very small. And so it's having trouble lifting her off the ground. So there is a situation that I feel you might have felt like you have outgrown. You might have felt like you're scanning the horizon for greener pastures, wanting to make your escape or wanting to leave a situation because it, it's no longer, it's like you're outgrowing it. It's no longer enough for you. But I also feel like the physical, the, the, the physical, constraints in that relationship or in that situation or in that circumstance is disallowing you from leaving from making a clean break so it's almost like the practical physical reality is still kind of um, holding you down or keeping you back and it's not untruthful with yourself is this situation working and can I move forward okay um, right off the bat uh, what I'm seeing here, and this is pretty much, you know, the, the center of the spread. I have here the High Priestess, the High Priestess, and the Knight of Swords. And um, we're dealing here with an air sign, very, very strong air energy, Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. There is something that you are finding out about this person, okay? There could be a little bit of an argument, a little bit of truth coming to light, a little bit of um, a situation where there's communication back and forth between you and this air sign. And I feel like, you know, the, the air suit is showing up three times. The Page of Swords, Knight of Swords, and Queen of Swords. This is somebody that you've had a lot of dealings with. You've known them for a very, very long time. You've kind of grown with each other. You grew up with each other or you have known each other. And you kind of know each other in and out. And I feel like there might be some communication coming in with this person. Either this person is wanting um, a lot more communication from you, they're wanting the truth from you, they're, they're demanding some answers from you. Like, are you, is your heart still in it? Are you still staying in this situation? Do you still want to be with me? I feel like there might have been some arguments very recently between you and this air sign, and as a result, the energy is very, very heavy for the month of March. And I feel there's going to be a lot of communication back and forth between you and this person. And for some of you, you might have already cut this person off, okay? What I'm feeling here is the Three of Swords, separation, stoppage in communication, uh, giving some situation a rest, possibly if there has been arguments, if there has been disagreements, if there has been um, just um, like um, 
words thrown about that could have been very, very hurtful. I feel like there is a stoppage to this communication. And I feel in a way you might have turned your back on this person. Okay, you might have turned your back. You might not have been responsive. You might have ghosted them or you might have um, held back when it comes to communication uh, from you to them in some capacity. And what I feel is you wanted you really wanted to build with this person. You really wanted to, you know, go the whole nine yards, okay? To to work on communication. You were very, very thorough, very honest, very truthful with this person. And with the Three of Pentacles, this is usually about collaboration, uh, working together, trying to... Um, compromise and trying despite our differences we always want to compromise we want to build upon the situation for some of you there might be a partner in your environment where i feel like you sense that this person is a little bit rigid okay so we have here the emperor rigidity someone who's very very fixed in their ways and as i'm saying fixed i'm thinking automatically the fixed air sign which is aquarius Somebody who's very rigid, someone who's very fixed in their ways. They want things on a schedule. They want things their way. Uh, whenever life throws them a curveball, they, um, whenever things happen unexpectedly, they, they kind of, um, they're not very flexible enough to go with the flow and to be versatile and to be flexible. They tend to make mountains out of molehills. And they tend to have a really, really, really hard and stressful time when they have to adapt to new situations. So I feel like you're dealing with someone who is a little bit of a worry wart. They're also a little bit stubborn, inflexible, very fixed in their ways, possibly from your perspective. You think that they are as well um, a little bit tunnel vision, okay? So... When you're dealing with this person, I feel like they create um, a very frenzy and a little bit of a chaotic um, atmosphere whenever you deal with them. So whenever you talk to them, I feel somebody who uh, gestures a lot, who's very excited, who's very animated and very passionate when they talk. And I feel like, you know, this is someone who's very, very smart too. Their mind constantly races and their mind churns out new ideas, new projects, new information. And when we're dealing as a water sign and as, as you guys, you guys are very laid back. When you're dealing with someone who is like this, it can feel really intense, right? So like when you're around them, even if they're not saying anything, you can feel the intensity of their concentration. You can feel the intensity, the intensity in which they are so absorbed or involved or, or just completely consumed by the things that they're really, really passionate about. And I feel in a way, um, for some of you, when you're in a relationship with this person, it can feel like you're put on the back burner. It can feel like they're focused on other things and not really giving you that, I guess, that nurturing and that emotional, um, I, I guess, the emotional support. It just feels like the relationship might be more about them, more about their crises, more about what's happening with them. And, and so I feel like there's a little bit of a... Um, energy that might be not be reciprocal okay um, I do feel this person does really care about you okay I feel like they're trying to reach out wanting communication okay and the way in which they approach you I do sense that they might not be um, you know the, the sword is up but the hand is outstretched so it's a little bit of a mixed signal and it can also be a little bit like Talk to me. You know, I feel like you might be turning your back. I feel like you're not really listening to what this person says. So if you feel like they've hurt you in the past, you might have turned a blind eye or you might be ghosting them or you might not be wanting to communicate with them. But I feel like they're, they're trying to reach out and they're getting more and more and more frustrated as the silent treatment continues. Okay, so this is a person I feel like they do really care about you. And I feel... I feel like there's a problem here in the relationship with, it could be potentially, um, not that it's a problem, but I feel like it's an issue with communication styles. 
um, I feel like they like to know things at all times. And so whatever it is that you can tell them, you know, if, if, you, if you're not able to give them an, an answer, you should at least give them a time frame in which they can expect an answer. If you're busy and you're not able to communicate with them, you should tell them, let me get back to you on this when I have a little bit more free time. Maybe in a few hours, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week. Or I don't even want to talk about this right now, so let me just get back to you when I'm ready to talk about it. So I feel like, you know, communicating and giving somebody kind of like a time frame, it would really help this situation because I feel like you might be feeling a little bit pestered by somebody whose energy is a little bit too intense and they're coming at you very, very, very fast. And it's really hard for you to to like multitask and, you know, take care of everything that you're taking care of while responding to them. So I, I see you kind of shutting yourself off from this person. Their energy is really intense. Um, I definitely see a stoppage in communication. And I also feel like you are withdrawing and drawing back your energy. I see you focusing more on finance, on work, on building your own stability. And I see many of you as well, possibly in a capacity where you are um, overseeing a lot of projects, overseeing a lot of people, you're in an environment where you're blending the energies of other people. So for example, you might be, um, I, I see you leading something and you're asking a lot of people, and it's from this card, the Three of Pentacles, and you're asking people, what do you think? How would you do this differently? And delegating responsibilities as well. So you have already a lot of things that are um, taking up a lot of your time, calling for your attention, a lot of things that you have to deal with. And so the things that aren't emergencies or the people that don't require immediate you know, uh, communication from you, those people are being pushed on the back burner because you have a lot of things that you need to take care of, okay? Um, I'm also seeing for some of you as well in the work environment, okay? Um, this is, I'm seeing like a judgment or some type of, um, some type of a gathering of people here, especially in the work environment where something is on display. For some of you, you might have to research into something, learn about a specific topic, and then bring forth into, bring it forth into the world where you are disseminating information or educating or um, telling people about this thing that you have researched. So I see you taking on an audience, okay? Being in an environment where people have a lot of reverence and a lot of respect for you, okay? You're coming through as someone who is sharing knowledge, who is well-respected, well-regarded, and I also feel like your energy is one of a mediator in a uh, some type of a situation, like playing mediator, someone who is um, who's a force to be reckoned with, but your strength is very soft and very soothing. Okay, uh, whereas in opposition to this person here, this is another person in your work environment who is a little bit more skeptical. They might be an air sign as well, so Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. And this is um, a really big sign, and I feel like it's kind of like a warning from the universe not to take things personally, okay? Um, this type of a person, they have a lot of questions. They're very inquisitive. They're very intelligent as well. And you might feel like they're asking you a lot of questions. So if you are working in a collaborative environment with them, in this capacity, where you're sharing ideas, possibly sharing resources, uh, they're going to ask you a lot of questions like, how did you arrive at this conclusion? Um, what makes you believe it's A versus B? What makes you think this is the best course of action? And I feel like, you know, they, they do that not in the spirit of, of hostility or trying to debunk you or trying to put you in your place. It might feel like that. It might feel a little bit antagonistic. But this is a person that needs to know. They need to, they, they like to pick other people's brains. They like to see how other people think. And they especially like to see 
how people arrive at their conclusions. So I feel like when you're dealing with someone like this, the energy can feel intense, but they're not antagonizing you. And there is no, there's nothing here that would indicate to me that they are doing anything to uh, discredit you or trying to undermine you, okay? I'm also seeing this person, somebody in your, your environment, someone who's really, really, really intelligent, and they're telling you about some type of a new income generating endeavor, like a new job, a, a position, a promotion, somebody who's giving you this idea, they're possibly passing along job postings, or they're telling you, you should apply for this, you should do this. They're coming in with a lot of ideas about income generating projects, about new projects, about new work that they feel would be very, very beneficial for you. And they're wondering why you're not moving forward with it. And they're wondering why you're not really actively pursuing it. Okay. So it seems like somebody's got a, um, has got you in mind for a big position, a job, a promotion, even a step up or something that is a little bit more that they believe would be a lot more exciting, a lot more fun, a lot more up your alley. And they're wondering why you're hesitant about taking, you know, this new endeavor. So going back to what I saw about the balloon, the woman and the balloon trying to, you know, uh, move forward, okay, trying to move up into the air. I feel like there's a lot of practical considerations that are racing through your mind, okay? I can't take this other job because uh, my house is here, my car is here, my kids are here. If I have to move to that, or even, you know, my friends are here, the, the really good uh, colleagues are over here. If I have to move to a different job, I have to start over. I might have to, you know, commute. I might have to find a new place to live. So whatever the situation is, I feel like you're talking yourself out of not moving away from where you are because where you are right now, it seems to me like it is very, very stable. There's still a lot of room for growth. You get along with the people and you're in some type of an environment where you might be uh, teaching a lot of people, sharing information, and you're very, very well regarded. And so you're comfortable, like you're happy here, and you're wondering why this person is telling you to move on, to move ahead, to, to continue forward. And so what I'm sensing here is, once again, you know, reassessing. If you're comfortable, by all means, tell the other person, you know, I'm comfortable here. Maybe in a few years, maybe we'll have this conversation uh, in a few months. Maybe I'll feel differently by the end of the year. But just keep in mind opportunities, you know, they come and go. They don't stick around um, waiting for us. Okay, so that's something you, you have to consider as well. But I definitely feel someone has you in mind for something that is spectacular. And they're wondering why you're dragging your feet. Okay, um, I do sense for many of you here, there is a, um, there, there's definitely a, a love relationship, possibly with an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, that you might have, um, that, that might have been very, very uh, tumultuous and there were a lot of hurt words and i feel like you're cutting this person out you're 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 not you're, you might be not so much giving them the silent treatment um out of spite but i feel like you're trying not to communicate with them so much because the intensity in that relationship and you also feel like they might be a little bit self-serving and then i also feel a really beautiful relationship here that we have with an earth sign a taurus a virgo or a capricorn and I feel like this person is going through a, a period of self-doubt in their own world, okay? Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. This is the Queen of Pentacles, someone who's very caring, very um, much a homebody. Um, this person, he or she, takes really good care of the people that they love. They're nurturing, they're uh, warm, very reliable, very good to be with. And for whatever reason... They could be a little bit withdrawn, a little bit antisocial, a little bit like, oh, let's just stay home today. They, they don't really want to socialize so much. They, I feel like they do want to spend time with you and they might not want to share you with other people. So I, I don't feel like, you know, controlling behavior, but I feel like they want to keep things low key. They don't like big 
uh, vibrant environments. They don't like a lot of people. They don't like large crowds. They don't want to do the whole bar hopping thing. So if that's something that you want to do, I feel like this person might, they might acquiesce. They might say, okay, let's just do it because they know how much it means to you, but they might feel a little bit out of their element. Okay. Nine of swords, worries, anxieties, and things like that. There, there could be, um, money issues that's troubling them. They could be dealing with, you know, their performance in the work environment. Um, they might have a little bit of a hard time um, dealing with the, the responsibilities at work. And in particular, if you're dealing with, you know, Capricorns and Taurus, okay? Um, they're, they're going through some rough patches right now when it comes to their work, their reputation, the demands of them in the work environment, and their inability to feel like they're able to um, have forward movement and forward progression in their career track, in their work situation. So if they're feeling a little bit withdrawn, if you haven't heard from them, I, I feel like that's where the situation is. It has nothing to do with you. I feel like it's just more about what's going on personally in their life, okay? So aside from that, money looks fine. It, it looks very, very stable. And I feel for many of you, yeah, someone has really got, got an, um, a, a position, something in store for you that they feel would be a perfect fit for you. And I, I feel like it would be a good idea for you to, to try to, you know, move forward with that, okay? If they're bringing you ideas, if they're bringing you things, I feel like they've really thought about you and I feel like it's a it's sort of like the universe uh, delivering you messages through a physical person through a messenger so that you could take up the opportunity I'm sensing as well for some of you um, I, I feel like there might be an illness in the home environment and I especially see like uh, elderly fatherly figures like a, an uncle that you might have been really close with, um, your father, grandfather, as you're the one that needs a little bit more of a softer touch, you know, the, the emotional connection, the, the, the emotional expression, but this person is not like that. So you have to be the one to kind of coach them and, and walk them through how to communicate emotionally. Okay, we all learn from, you know, the, 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 the biggest relationships in our lives. We, we learn from each other. They could benefit very much from your soft touch, from your diplomacy, from the ways in which you're able to tolerate a lot watery and water absorbs everything. Okay. It absorbs heat. It absorbs sunlight. Nothing escapes from its depth, but at the same time, I feel like you feel a lot of things very, very strongly, but out of this sense of kindness, you don't tell people like, this is what I feel about you. Let me give you what I think about you, or let me give you your, uh, my two cents. You don't do that because you understand that it could also be very, very hurtful. And you also understand that, you know, things happen. People have we're all humans. We have, we make mistakes. We all have flaws. And if we're going to sit there and point out everybody's flaws at the end of the day, it doesn't really accomplish anything. And it can create a lot of hurt feelings. And that's why you hold back. The other person doesn't get it. And so if there has been harsh words thrown about, um, talk it out, you know, have the discussions with, um, with that significant other. And I feel for many of you, it's a marriage, it's a relationship where there are children, it's a relationship possibly where you're really, really thinking about like, am I still in love with this person? You know, are, is my love only now, like, is it only going towards the kids or the kids, the reason why we're, we're together? Is it enough for me to stay together with this person because of the children? Or is there more to it? Can I fix the relationship? Is it worth investing more time to fix? So I feel like it is worth it because I feel the whole time you and the other person might not be seeing eye to eye on a lot of things. And so changing the ways in which you communicate would really be beneficial in this situation. 
For others of you, I feel like an, a new home is in order. There's a lot of repairs that are needed in your existing home environment. If you are planning to sell, okay, and you're thinking, am I going to be, should I fix it up? I, I would say that, you know, uh, see what you can get away with. So that means if, if it's like something um, glaring, like something that is very visible, yes, you want to do the cosmetic fix-ups. But if it's something that is going to invest a lot of money, resources, and just uh, a lot of labor, you might be best off, like better off just um, getting rid of the property, okay? So, Pisces, I hope the reading is helpful for you guys. Um, I will be back maybe next week, but um, maybe as well, you know, in towards the end of uh, the middle of the month, okay? 